this is a, some rhythm practice, okay? This is some exercise to work our right hand and also to fortify the chords so we can memorize them. We're gonna use a G, and then we're gonna use the C. Right. You could do a D, G this way, or if you're coming from a C, I often, I like to do a G like this. And then I just move down for the C like this. And the next chord is A minor. That's just moving that finger under there. One measure of each, so four beats of G. Yep, then four beats of C, four beats of A minor, and then it ends with four beats of G. So it's a little tricky. The pattern itself goes G, C, A minor, G, and then it repeats. So you'll be playing that G twice in a row. It ends on G and starts on G. I'll show you now. I'm going to put on a, um, a drum backing track real quick. And... Uh, And by the way, if you're all content creators, you're going to use backing tracks. Type in free use or co a copyright free. Yeah, there's a good one there. Plug that in quick. I like that. Now, let's see here. Alrighty. Let's see if this works. See? And I can slow it down now. This is a little bit too fast for what we wanted to do. Uh, let me go 75% the speed. There, that's a nice speed. try uh, a different backing track. I'll, I'll put a couple different ones here for us, you know, so that you can try a couple different ones. Um, let's see here. I like the way you're doing it. Can you show me that drum how you're doing it again? I'll do it. And we'll, I won't put a beat on for this one. Alright, I got it. That should be really like this. One. drum pattern itself as one, two, three, four. And that's another way to help us keep track. You know, when you do a strum pattern like that, you just, you make the pattern itself in groups of fours. And it helps hold the map together while we're playing without having to actually be reading it. You know, it helps us memorize it. We're almost a kind of, we feel it coming, you know. We get used to this four, 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 things happening in groups of four. Uh, let me put on another... This is pop rock. Let me put free use. Once again, if you put free use drum tracks, uh, drum backing tracks, um, a whole bunch of good stuff comes up. You could put rock. I'm putting rock in there now because it's kind of what we're doing. Let's see here. There's some metal. Drive rock. What does that mean? Sounds like driving your car. Oh, wait, we just did that one. Hang on. See what this one's like here. Let's see how. Ooh. 
move forward a little bit, go to the chorus. <coughs> That'll work. To help me count that, I, would, I like to count like one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh. So by putting in the words and uh, it kind of helps my timing. Yeah, it helps me keep this, keep the, keep the beat going in between the one, two, three, four, like that. That's a different one. Let me find one that has a, a bluesy beat to it real quick because um, between the rock and the blues, there's a bit of a difference in the feeling, huh? Rock is very separated evenly. One and two and three and four and da 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 When you start putting in the like triplet one and uh two and uh three and uh four and uh one and uh two and uh three and uh four and uh to get the heartbeat or the blues feeling from that you can count one and uh two and uh three and but then you don't strum on the end so it'll be one and uh two and uh three and uh four and uh one and uh two and uh three and if you just keep saying that and strum on every one except the end one and a two and a three and a four. If I do that without saying it out loud, you hear a heartbeat. So when we count blues, we tend to count preceding the beat, meaning we would count like four and a one and a two, a three, a four. It's a little bit of a different blues a little bit of a different beat than rock, you know. Well, not a little bit, it's, t it's t way different, actually. Here, let's see what this one's like. Another free use. One and a two and a three and a four and a one and I was in G, sorry. And then the C. Now we Two and three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three. Let me slow that one down a little bit. That makes a great That's exercise. Oh, the blue shuffle. No, yeah, the old Chuck that. Berry, like this. <laughs> you can do it from the G. One finger here. Yeah, my, my buddy Gene here doing a lesson. He just discovered the Chuck Berry blue shuffle. Well, it's you're going to have to, right here, stretch to that one so it makes it kind of hard like this watch that's it. The thing. yeah that's this my, the little finger the if you I can pull. here's the trick you don't leave this finger there when you reach for your middle finger you take that one off because your hand can stretch oh, far like this watch watch okay. c is right under it right under for the C. Yeah, so here, G, here's your C. And then your A.
By the way, when it comes back around from the four to the one, you should hear the drums usually put like a fill to remind the whole band like, hey, we're starting the progression over again. So watch, in between this last G, these exercises you know the more use we get the muscle memory and then that leaves our mind open to be able to hear these other little things like the drums right here The drums definitely have a good purpose in the band. They're keeping all the timing together. The longer you play an instrument the, and you listen that's to the drums. Yes. Mm -hmm. All righty. I'm Wings for Billy. If you haven't yet, hit the like button and subscribe. Appreciate you. Thanks. Bye-bye.